You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Have you ever wondered how inbred the Habsburgs really were? What women in the past used for birth control? Or what Queen Victoria's nine children got up to? On the History Tea Time podcast, I profile remarkable queens and LGBTQ plus royals, explore royal family trees, and delve into women's medical history and other fascinating topics. Join me every Tuesday for History Tea Time, wherever fine podcasts are enjoyed. What do you get when you take two childhood friends with a passion for unexplored history and a whole lot of booze? You get us, Queen's Podcast. And here at Queen's, we are spilling the tea on all kinds of women from history. From New Orleans voodoo queen, Marie Laveau, to Marie Antoinette, and everything in between. Each queen is paired with a cocktail recipe that will totally get you in the mood to hear the fun, dramatic, and juicy stories of fascinating women from history. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Cheers! Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil. I'm here with Jeff, Ken, and Matt. How is everyone? Good evening. Good morrow. Doing good. Yeah. Jeff? I was going to make the good morrow joke, but... Oh, sorry. I was too slow. Uh, well, Jeff, uh, Jeff is is doing something on this piece of paper. He's writing with a, a very nice pen. Uh, so is Ken, and so am I. Uh, Matt, we can't really see because he's in complete darkness. Uh, Matt, Matt gets nothing. <laughs> Matt gets nothing. But yeah, uh, yeah we just wanted to uh, make a, a fun little statement here. Normally, we joke around about having uh, sponsors every episode, just different brands that we we name drop, and one of them actually came through uh, after talking about him. And uh, Bic sent us enough pens to last us the entirety of the show be- as, before we die. It's a lot of pens. <laughs> it's a lot the of pens. official pen of triviality, Bic. Bic, there you go. <laughs> An <laughs> unpaid sponsorship. Uh, but yeah, we have enough pens here uh, to last us until we're in the dirt. And um, these are really nice pens, though. I do want to make one comment, though. One of them um, I actually will shill for a little bit. It's called Intensity. Uh, it's basically like uh, it's the a com- fine point permanent marker. There you go. Thank you. And it's it's basically the competitor to to well, Sharpie. We can't say that. We can we can say it's a competitor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Uh, so it's it's Bic's version uh, of a what would you call it, Ken? Mm-hmm. A fine point. It's a fine point permanent marker. Uh, but what's nice about it, um, after having done the Swayze book, everyone always gives you a sharpie to to you know sign the books with and stuff, and they always run out of ink and they always get really dry. You're going intensity now. And intensity, I, I have not seen it uh, get rid of the ink as fast as a sharpie. It, it seems to last a lot longer. It's got a nice cap on it. Um, and I just like the name of it because anytime someone says, "What are you doing?" I can say, "I'm writing Signing your name with intensity. with intensity." Yeah, exactly. So when your new when your new book drops, you'll have to have a bunch of those. I will exactly. I'm going to send some to you, Matt, as well. So then you can, uh, you know, sign pink slips with it. Oh, okay. Say you're, <laughs> I'm firing you with intensity. Well, I for one yeah, plan I do that a ton. swimming in these pens like Scrooge McDuck. As you should. <laughs> uh, but in order to uh, celebrate uh, all these nice pens that we have here today, we need someone uh, to host oh. a game for us so that we can use these pens to write our answers down. And we have a very special guest with us today, coming to us from Texas, Oakland Five member on Patreon, Stephen Leckby. How are you, Stephen? I'm doing well, and thank you for the invite. Um, it's just great to be here. Uh, it's so wonderful to have you. We were talking a little bit before. Uh, you mentioned that you you work for the government. We won't say which sector because uh, it's all top secret, but we've been talking about your love of games uh, and uh, other things that we've been talking about beforehand, sports teams and whatnot. But tell us a little bit about yourself uh, for the listeners at home. Um, so I'm originally from Texas. I, uh, I'm the youngest of eight children. I have six older sisters and one older brother. Um, I grew up, uh, I grew up in Odessa and, uh, so I've, you know, Friday night lights and football was a big part. I was in the marching band. Um, I'm actually, you could see the back of my head twice in the movie Friday night lights. Cause I was an extra. So that's oh, nice. a fun no way. fact. Um, that's really funny. It's, yeah. The championship locker room scene. So that was an interesting experience. Um, I've been, I've been working in the government for about uh 17 and a half years uh i've been i've lived in ohio i've lived overseas right now i'm currently in san antonio texas where it's a balmy what like 82 degrees right now (laughs) Um, (laughs) i just worked out today so i'm still you know cooling down per se so okay well we're here to to heat you back up uh because we're ready for some trivia 
And, um, you know, speaking of Friday Night Lights, um, we were talking about, you know, the, the football fandom that, that happens in Texas. Is trivia as big as football in Texas? I doubt. I doubt it, right? Uh, not, close not, quite, not, quite, thing, not quite as big, yeah. but there are uh, there are a number of trivia uh, here in Texas. I just need to find a team. That's my problem is finding a team or finding a place where I can, you know, host a game. Well, all of our listeners uh, and croppers, if you're near the San Antonio area or around about, um, let's reach out to uh, to Stephen or reach out to us and we'll put you in touch with Stephen. And uh, maybe you can create a team or find a venue for him to host. But speaking of hosting, you're going to be doing that today. We need some teams. Uh, we flipped a, a memory card and it looks like, Ken, you and I are going to be on a team together. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and Stephen was telling us about this really cool game um, that he had. It was 20 pounds. Uh, what was it called? Frost Haven? Frost Haven. Correct. Okay, and you said there's another game called Gloom Haven, and Ken and I said, well, why don't we be, Ken? Uh, we'll just be the light version of that, so we'll be Melancholy Haven. All right. And, or, uh, or should we be Ennui Haven? Oh, I like that better. <laughs> Ennui Haven. I like it. Uh, Matt, uh, how about you and Jeff? Um, we're not quite, uh, it's not quite frost weather. It's more of a, a dew. So we're going to be dew haven. Yeah. That would be horrible. You know, we got to take shelter from that. That's the Rammstein song. Is that correct? Do do haven. <laughs> uh, well, we have our teams. Uh, let's throw it to the rules and see how the game's played. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream, yeah, the cream of the crop. Now we know. Now we know. The that more was you know. a great reading, but not as great as writing with these big pens. <laughs> <laughs> they, it is. They're, they're really getting their pens worth here. All right, let's <laughs> let's uh, toss it over to Stephen. Imagine play. how much we'd talk about them if they gave us money. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, uh, and before you begin, uh, just a little quote to get you ready to go. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose, as they say in Friday Night Lights. So let's, mm. let's rock and roll. Awesome, awesome. It was really interesting hearing Billy Bob Thornton say that in the takes, the, so many takes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Did he do it I, in his Sling Blade accent at all, or no? Can't lose. No, mm. no, unfortunately he didn't. Uh, mm, but ass. a little bit of quick trivia for you, if you've ever seen that film, there's a character named Booby Miles, and in that championship locker room scene, the actor is on crutches, and there's a coach standing beside him, and that coach is, in fact, the real Booby Miles. Oh. oh, nice. So a little fun trivia. Um, Even more but... fun, there's actually a person named Booby Miles. <laughs> <laughs> so for uh, round one, uh, I decided I was going to try Stream of Consciousness. It was a little bit harder than I thought, but I think I got through it. So hopefully it'll go pretty well. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. Um, Australia is typically a very warm place. Stephen Bradbury uh, an athlete used a non-aggressive strategy to win Australia's first Winter Olympic gold medal in this sport. I don't know. I don't know any sport for being non aggressive. There's not too many contact winter sports. Curling? You don't have to well, be aggressive for that. The, I don't know how well Australians do at curling. An aggressive um, figure skater. <laughs> well, and the fact that um, it's only one person leads me to believe that it might not be a team event right it might be a solo yeah event. maybe a downhill skiing you just kind of hang out maybe a luge maybe maybe a skeleton yeah skeleton's that that always would... aggressive it's terrifying yeah. um do you have do you have anything you're leaning towards no not really Ugh, me either i'd hate to get the sports adjacent question wrong but <laughs> that might <laughs> be what happens here um yeah, I can't. I can't think of any solo. Let's. I guess let's do figure skating. I, let's think of a non-aggressive figure skater. Okay. And we're saying speed skating. Don't know why. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, on Wee Haven is correct. It is speed skating, and it's a famous mm. race because oh, the three Anton Ono O. Apollo Antona Ono and I can't oh, remember yeah. the second place gentlemen were fighting for first place. Bradbury and thought wipe that each he, other out. he didn't even know he he didn't even feel he needed to be there, so he's just like 
kind of slowing down in third place, and they wreck, and he just non-aggressively slides by to win gold. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, number two, from speed skating to just speed. In 1968, this aircraft replaced its predecessor, the A-12, as the United States Airborne Strategic Reconnaissance Platform. It was retired for good in 1998, but still holds the world record for the fastest air-breathing manned aircraft. All right, we have a uh, solid guess on this one. Matt, is this plane also the name of a band, per chance? I don't know. What What were you thinking? I was thinking that this was the SR-71, also known as the oh. Blackbird. Okay. Was that the one that Pepsi was going to give away for a million Pepsi points? Uh, I thought that was like a Harrier jump jet or something. But... Oh, well, good enough. Um, yeah, I love SR-71. Um, great band. Uh, great great plane, probably. Yeah. So I think we can lock in with that. And I believe it meets those qualifications as it wasn't rocket propelled and it was manned. So Okay. We just said the stealth bomber. I can't be more specific than that with uh, letters and numbers. You can't be too more specific than that? So on this one, uh, Dewhaven is correct. It is the SR-71 Blackbird, which is also the jet that the X-Men flew in. And uh, Paul McCartney's favorite plane, I believe. Yep. (laughs) Funny you should say that, because number three, Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Paul McCartney wrote Blackbird in response to the civil rights struggles he was witnessing in the U.S. during the 1960s. In particular, a photo of a 15-year-old girl screaming in anger at Elizabeth Eckford on her first day of school. What moniker named after a capital was given to this famous group of students, which included Eckford? All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and lock in here. Um, we know what it's supposed to sound like, but we can't uh, We can't close on this question. Mm-hmm. What springs um, to mind, Matt? Uh, first thoughts were I was between... Montgomery and Little Rock, and I think it's a Little Rock. Okay. But I don't know how many. It's like the Little Rock six? five or six or number. Five was five was the Central Park. Right. The Central, Central Park, Park five. five. And, and then the not, nine was the Chicago, right? Yeah, was the Chicago, Chicago nine. nine. I think so. So I don't, I don't think it's that. You want to do right. six? Chicago seven. Yeah. Chicago seven. He's right. Oh. But... A six, maybe? I don't know. That was just the number in my head. It's in between. <laughs> Five and seven. <laughs> yeah, we can't, yeah, that sounds like a great reasoning. Uh, we can lock in with Little Rock Six. Our reasoning was less, sir, because we don't know our capitals. Uh, we just had the Birmingham Five. So, uh, uh, Dewhaven was close. They got the Little Rock part right, but they confused the nine because it's the oh. Little Rock Nine. Oh, Do we okay. want to give half points on that? Or no. That's up to you? no points to these okay. jokers. Give us six points. Six <laughs> points. No. <laughs> oh. All right. So number four, little rocks are everywhere. In 2002, MIT and Harvard researchers discovered the key to longevity of Roman concrete. Buildings like the Pantheon and Aqueduct still survive today. The researchers found the use of lime created calcium carbonate that gave the concrete self-healing properties. They, attra- they also attributed the self-healing properties t- to this process during the creation of making the concrete. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't mind, uh, I don't mind what Neil wrote. It seems like a real thing, so we're gonna go with it. What well, you, you joked vibranium, but was it that they were like vibrating the concrete or like tamping it down somehow? Or Ooh. that's possible uh i, know I that's have a thing no that idea they do to concrete now um yeah. and i thought it was like the difference between like like some of the other processes and then like cement right because like portland cement is now like i guess similar to roman concrete they say so no well, they say that yeah but i don't, I don't know, know what anything you're the talking process, about Matt, so. can we hear that on your right. uh, your cement podcast about uh portland <laughs> cement <laughs> Portland cement, best cement. Uh, the um, name of that podcast. It's your by favorite the way. time of the week. It's curb <laughs> review. <laughs> you email us uh, your favorite curbs. We review them. I will curb my enthusiasm for that. There we go. Podcast. Uh, I think vi- vibrating. I don't know what what would the process be. That's they like vibrate it to like get the air pockets okay. out or something. I don't know. 
There you go. Vibrating it. Okay. Mm. So, yeah, I, I heard all about this. Like, the concrete has flaws, and it allows, like, the water to flow, like, out of it instead of stretching and breaking it. Anyways, we said emulsification. We don't know. Okay, so points for neither team. The term I was looking for was hot mixing, so that mm. when they oh. mixed it, they Ooh. kept it hot. And you're right. It What happens is the water gets in, and it actually... Um, the calcium liquefies, but then dries very quickly, and so tightens back down, and that's what keeps the concrete from cracking. All right, so we'll move on to number five. So it was hot when I attended a wedding in Mexico. Now, one night, me and the wedding party, we attended a Lucha Libre match in uh, Guadalajara, Mexico. Now, the history of Lucha dates back to 1863, when Enrique Ugarte... Ugartechia, I hope I'm saying that correctly, combined elements of Greco-Roman wrestling with Olympic wrestling. Now, what does Lucha Libre translate to in English? So my first inclination on this is, is Lucha means fight and Libre is free, right? So like a free yeah. for all? Yeah, it's like free form fighting or free form. essentially essentially no rules was the thing. Was okay. It was like the Greco-Roman wrestling, but there were no rules. So that's why they can fly off the ring and do all the crazy luchador things that we love. Yeah. I thought Greco-Roman um, wrestling was nude and a lot of these gentlemen even cover their faces. So that is the rule yeah. here in the studio too. That's our next, uh, <laughs> Patreon wagers. We're going to nope. Nude Greco-Roman. <laughs> well, we said, uh, roughly the same thing. We said free fighting. Um, and I also wrote rules free. So free fighting. And both teams were getting points to this. The two translations that I found were freestyle wrestling and free fight. Speaking of free fighting, both teams are trading blows back and forth because the scores are tied 20 to 20. Some of those blows have missed, though. <laughs> it's all part of the act. So moving on, number, uh, number six, freedom. Texas was an independent republic for a short time. The Texas Revolution occurred from October 1835 to April 1836. Now, while the Alamo is the most famous part of the conflict, and we all remember it, the Battle of San Jacinto actually ended the war. Mexican General Santa Ana surrendered to this commander, whom the capital of Texas was once named for. Sam Houston was the first president of the independent... Republic of Texas. Yeah. That sounds like the name then. <laughs> so. So Sam Houston. And we just said Austin. Which is the current capital. You don't know. So uh, points to a do Haven. It uh, was Sam Houston. So for the too time. Many, too many capital questions here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys the... need a map in that studio. Mm. At the beginning, uh, when Texas became a republic, Houston was actually the capital. Um, and then it was changed to Austin. And there was actually a small battle to keep all of the paperwork from being taken from Austin back to Houston, which involved uh, a woman with a cannon and <laughs> she shot a building. It's a funny story. But uh, it is, in fact, Sam Houston was the general. Austin used to be the capital of Texas. Still is, but it used to too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to number seven. Houston, we have a problem. Apollo 13 is a classic film. Directed by Ron Howard, whose credits include Cocoon, Parenthood, Backdraft, Willow, and so many more. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree as his daughter Bryce Dallas Howard has received acclaim for directing multiple episodes of a loved sci-fi TV series, including one called The Heiress. Are you familiar with the works of Bryce Dallas Howard? Well, originally I was thinking that this might be a Black Mirror question because she appeared in an episode of Black Mirror, but I don't remember an episode of Black Mirror being called Heiress. Um, mm -hmm. trying to think of a sci-fi series. Black Mirror is a sci-fi series. It is, if, if, but I don't um, think I don't think there's an episode that fits that clue. Did she direct for Westworld? Or she might have. It's not Mr. Robot. No, I don't think so. I'm I'm fine mm -hmm. guessing Westworld. I don't. I don't okay. see any reason why that couldn't be the answer. 
let's lock in with Westworld. Okay, they're saying Westworld. Yep, and uh, I remember reading an article where she was excited to direct some episodes of The Mandalorian. Uh. Uh. So points to Anwi Haven. She has directed multiple episodes of The uh, Mandalorian. This one in particular, uh, there's a great homage to her father in Apollo 13, where the Mandalorian ship is damaged and he's coming through the atmosphere of a planet and you have that shot of the water coming off all of the instruments. And she said that she really wanted that to pay homage to her father. I wonder if she's casting her uncle Clint in any roles. He deserves it. He probably took care of her as a kid. Give Clint some love. <laughs> Is Clint Howard her uncle? Yeah. Holy crap. I learned a thing today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to question eight. The Mandalorian was created by John Favreau and Dave Filoni. The show pioneered the use of a new filmmaking technology, the show is primarily filled on a stage that is completely surrounded by video screens. This allows the actors to be more immersed in the scene. It allows the special effects artists to get the lighting better. They don't have to do lighting work because the lighting's already done. And plus they have backgrounds that they can use. Now, the landscapes that are shown on the volume, at least for the first season, were created in this unbelievable video game engine. We're looking. We're looking for the the video game engine. Correct. Uh, I believe that it less, might be less than real. Unreal, yeah. potentially. I, I would I would guess that That's as well. That's how unbelievable it is. As I often yeah. uh, answer these sorts of questions, a comprehensive list of all the engines I can name, Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> the end. You have real, then Unreal. No, I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. So points to both teams. It was the Unreal engine. All right, so number nine. We sometimes need to create unreal monsters and boogies to stand in for all the things we fear in our real lives. Richard Bachman has written eight novels, including two after he died of cancer of the pseudonym. What real author adopted this nom de plu- the nom de plume Richard Bachman to get around the one book a year rule publishers imposed on him in 1977? Mm, Richard Bachman Overdrive, I believe. I heard the, this is a, a rather regal, potentially royal gentleman, is this not? <laughs> With a yeah. fondness for the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so let's put us all out of our misery and say that we know that it's Stephen King. Stephen King. Yes, yeah, Stephen King. Yep. Points for both teams. You guys hit it on in the head. I'm guessing you you guys have talked about Bachman before. Maybe an episode it I might missed. have come up Twice. from time to time. <laughs> Writer of The Running Man, Arnold Schwarzenegger classic. It's true. I love that film. Um, okay, so finally, number 10 in the first round. LeBron King James recently passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to become the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. Who are the next three players behind those two greats on the list? All right, they're locked in. Um, Wilt? Uh, think? I'm trying to remember. It's yeah, Kobe? It's- uh oh yeah i think it's is it kobe it's carl malone for sure okay michael jordan i think is number five okay so it's just a matter of who is four because i think malone is three wilt possibly when he played in an era where he was just that much better than everyone let's go with it okay so we'll go carl malone and will chamberlain one more oh my uh three four five michael jordan, michael jordan. mm-hmm uh, three and five, definitely correct. Carl Malone, number three, Michael Jordan, number five, and the person who took all of Michael Jordan's moves, number four, Kobe Bean Bryant. Mm. I said it. Yep. So points to, uh, uh, Doom, ha- uh, Doom Haven. You guys did say it. It was Carl Malone, then Kobe Bryant, then Michael Jordan. Well, with that 10th question, it looks like we're chasing a little bit here at on We Haven with 50 points, and Dew Haven with 60. Chasing waterfalls. Shouldn't do that. Don't do it. Don't do I, it. I heard you are not supposed to do that. All right, what do you have in store for the swing round today? So the swing round today, I'm going to, it's going to be, I call it name change. I'm going to give you the original name of a company and the year it was founded, and I'm going to need you to give me uh, what the name of the company eventually became some are still active some aren't okay so number one quantum computing services 1985 number two 
back rub in 1996. Number three, sound of music, 1966. Number four, research in motion, 1984. Number five, Brad's drink, 1893. <laughs> Number six, Tokyo Shushin Kogoyo, 1946. Number seven, Blue Ribbon Sports, 1964. Number eight, Computing Tabulating Recording Company, or CTR, 1911. Number nine, Marafuku Company, 1889. And finally, number 10, Jerry's Guide to the World Wide Web, 1994. All right, we'll take a quick break. Um, but first, we just want to remind everybody that we have a survey going around. Yep. Uh, for the next two months, our network airwave is going to be conducting a listener survey to help us get to know you, your interests, and what you think of the show. Yeah, go to surveymonkey.com slash r slash airwave. Just a couple minutes uh, is all it takes, and your feedback will help us uh, fetch ads that interest you guys. Um, and there's a place at the end to tell us anything you want. As our way of saying thank you, you'll be entered to win a $500 Amazon gift card. Again, that's surveymonkey.com slash r slash airwave, or click the link in our episode notes after today's show. And now for the break. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. As you know, I talk a lot about my migraines or neck pain and putting Tiger Balm on during recordings. And while I do have fun with that, it is sort of a product of my stress. I'm often very, very stressed, and it was exacerbated by the pandemic. We weren't able to see friends and family, and even for our own show here, we had to do everything virtually, which is great for trivia, but sometimes you do need the face-to-face -face experience of talking to someone to help you get through some problems you may be dealing with or some feelings that you're maybe unsure of how to deal with. What's nice about BetterHelp is it's something that I'm considering trying, and I'm considering starting therapy. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. What I really like about it is all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you can get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge if it's just not a right fit. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com triviality today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash triviality. Was the Sphinx 10,000 years old? Were there serial killers in ancient Greece and Rome? What were the lives of transgender, intersex, and non-binary people like in the ancient world? We're Jen. And Jenny. From Ancient History Fangirl. We tell you true stories and tall tales of the ancient world. Sometimes we do it tipsy. Sometimes we have amazing guests on our show. Historians like Barry Strauss, podcasters like Liv Albert, Mike Duncan, and authors like Joanne Harris and Ben Aronovich. We take you to the top of Hadrian's Wall to watch the Roman Empire fall at the end of the world. We walk the catacombs beneath the Temple of the Feathered Serpent under Teotihuacan. We walk the sacred spirals of the Nazca Lines in search of ancient secrets. And we explore mythology from ancient cultures around the world. Come find us at ancienthistoryfangirl.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And we are back from our deliberations. Let's hear the questions one more time, and we'll give our answers one by one. Okay. Number one, Quantum Computing Services, 1985. Uh, we just took a stab at a computer company and said Microsoft. All right. We took a stab at a technology company, and we said Qualcomm. So no points on this one. Quantum Computing Services eventually became America Online. Or AOL. Hmm. Qualcomm? Well, the, yeah. Very well known. They, they have a stadium they have, named they after them. Stadium. <laughs> they also have, they make like computer chips for Apple and stuff. Okay. Qualcomm. Number two. <laughs> Back rub. Qualcomm. <laughs> Number two. Neil knew this one. <laughs> yeah, we went with the old Google. Mm, we went with the book face, Facebook. And points to On We Haven, it is in fact Google. Number three, uh, Sound of Music, 1966. 
Uh, we thought maybe this was a speaker company, so we said Bose. We did too. We said Marshall. So uh, it, it was a uh, stereo shop, but they sold stereos, and they Best would eventually Radio become Shay? Best Buy. Ooh. Wow. Because everyone kept coming in making Hills Are Alive jokes, and I got sick of it. <laughs> sure, that's exactly what was happening. Number four, Research in Motion, 1984. Well, we said uh, Apple. Oh, I would thought that this was Pixar. So they eventually shortened it to an acronym, RIM, but they would eventually change the name to BlackBerry. This is BlackBerry is a, still around? Uh, they yeah. are around yeah. as a software company. They no longer make phones. Okay. I think where I remember that is their stock symbol was RIM, and that's where I'd heard that mm. before. Number five, Brad's Drink, 18. 18- 93. Um, yeah, this is one that came up on our show, and I think we were laughing at how bad Brad's drink was. Um, but I think it's Pepsi. Yeah. Uh, if, hopefully this will be the pep in our swing round since uh, we said Pepsi. <laughs> and points for both teams. It is, in fact, Pepsi. Number six, the Tokyo Shushin Kogoyo, 1946. Hey, Neil, do you mind if I call an audible on this one? Sure. We're going to say Toyota. Hmm. We went through some of the different car companies, but we settled on Sony. That was our original answer, just for Mm. the record. (laughs) And points to Do Haven, it is, in fact, Uh, Sony. Sorry, Neil. That's okay. That's all right. I owe you five. No, that's all right. We're even now because you said Kobe, but I just didn't pull it. I didn't think Kobe, so... Number seven, Blue Ribbon Sports, 1964. Yep, uh, you would have seen this company, I believe, on the feet of podcast favorites, uh, Steve Prefontaine. So we said Nike. Yeah, we said Nike. Do you remember when you made us watch two Prefontaine movies? <laughs> and points Which one both... did you like? <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I honestly can't remember either one of them. Well, there's Jared Leto and... You can uh... only watch a man run so long. <laughs> you know, it's funny... <laughs> I was going to say Jared Leto, and the other one was Bobby Moynihan, but it was not Bobby Moynihan. <laughs> Bobby Moynihan. <laughs> I would watch that movie. Billy Crudup was the other guy, not Bobby Moynihan. Oh, yeah. I'd watch the recasting of that. But points to both teams, it is, in fact, Nike. Uh, number eight, uh, Computing Tabulating Recording Company, CTR 1911. My only in on this one is I know this company has been around forever. Uh, Ken and I did not know what they did in 1911 or what was possible, but we said IBM. Uh, we also don't know what they did in 1911, but we hope that was their name. We said IBM. Uh, points to both teams, International Business Machines or IBM. I don't know what they do now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number nine, the Marafuku Company, 1889. Um. It's widely known uh, by me that Nintendo used to make Hanafuda um, playing cards. So we said Nintendo. I swear Marafuku is an actual like current manufacturer of ramen. But um, we said Nintendo. And points to both teams. Uh, you are correct. In my research for this question, I was just looking at Nintendo, but when I Googled it while I was trying to make sure I was pronouncing it correctly, there is, in fact, a ramen brand called Marafuku Ramen. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Tasteful. It's where you're eating little bits of Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on to number 10, Jerry's Guide to the World Wide Web, 1994. In Russia, you eat Kirby. <laughs> Kirby doesn't eat you. Okay. We said Yahoo. Uh, we also said Yahoo. And yet another hierarchical officious oracle. Yes, points to both teams. It is Yahoo. <laughs> After the swing round, it looks like Team on We Haven picking up 30 points, bringing their total to 80. And Do Haven picking up the same, bringing their total to 90. Um, so for round two... Um, I, uh, it being Women's History Month, I went with uh, a women's history. And so all of these questions have to do with uh, famous women. It's good timing since uh, we're actually recording on International Women's Day. Yeah. And I have six older sisters, so uh, I feel yeah. that this kind of honors them. So we'll start out with question number one. 
This pioneer in the field of computer science got her PhD in mathematics from Yale in 1934. After being initially turned away, she joined the Navy Reserves as a part of the Women Accepted for Voluntary Emergency Service, or WAVES. During her life, she was part of many early computing innovations and in languages that are still used today. She retired from the Navy Reserve in 1986 at the age of 79 after 42 years of service. All right, we're going to lock in. Oh, boy. I knew they'd lock in and then we'd have to talk. Um, do you have any ideas? Um, I was always told that it was better to be thought a fool than open my mouth and remove all doubt. But I'm going to mm. do it anyway. So... <laughs> <laughs> At first, I thought this was going to be a Hedy Lamar question, but I don't think that's her um, since she was more in the in the acting realm. Um, I'm trying to remember, is this potentially um, one of the people in Hidden Figures, but I don't remember any of those names off the top of my head. So well, that's not good. I We're know. Hopeful. Do you have any thoughts? No. <laughs> I don't <know. laughs> I my first thought, I think my first thought was... In mathematics, I'm like, is this Sally Fields of the Fields Medal? Like, no, it's not, that's not anything. What I don't, I don't have anything to provide for this question. <laughs> All right, what's it going to be, gentlemen? They're just going to tap out because we don't know. Well, if we're right, you should have taken a lucky Johnson. We'll see if we're right. Yeah, we think it's uh, Catherine Johnson. We knew she was in the Navy, and uh, she also helped with all the uh, shuttle launches uh, and hidden figures and whatnot. So that's what we locked it with. So unfortunately. No points for either team. Uh, this was Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. There's mm, okay. uh, She's a very short woman, and there's famous pictures of her standing next to this uh, computing manual that's almost nearly as tall as she is. Um, uh, so moving on to number two. The 2022 Nobel Prize for Chemistry was awarded for the development of click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry. One of the joint recipients of the award coined the term bioorthogonal chemistry for chemical reactions compatible with living systems. Who is this Harvard-educated chemist who accepted the award with, alongside, Morton Meldahl and Carl Berry? I missed this one, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, let's just go with Lucky Johnson. You weren't live streaming the was Nobel not Prize live awards. Streaming the, like... the awards this year. Yeah, <laughs> we 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 I, missed the uh, Nobel party. Yeah, I think it was the same nice as the Teen Choice Awards, so I had to make my choice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look, we're gonna I, go with the lucky have Johnson. to be made, right? So yeah. yeah, this is. I feel like I'm feeling like this is not gonna be our round, unfortunately. Um, but hey, we we love and respect all women out there in science and STEM categories, but we don't know a lot of them. Jeff, do you have any idea? No, I, I'm. It's bugging me, especially since the last one. I've heard of Grace Hopper. It, you know, it's like I'm, I'm interested in the science and stuff. I don't really think about the people too much, unfortunately. But um, I'm, yeah, I'm at a total loss. Uh, a lucky Thompson. <clears throat> Thompson's the name. So, unfortunately, again, no points. Uh, her name is Carolyn Bertuzzi. So, I actually currently work in a uh, in a laboratory, and so. You know, I, I kind of hear about these names kind of in passing, and so. Do you wear a lab coat? <laughs> no, <laughs> unfortunately, question. unfortunately, I don't have a lab coat currently. Uh, um, we're gonna have to get you one or no, something. A Triviality yeah, branded lab coat with I would a complimentary lo- I would, I would big pen that. in the pocket. <laughs> a big pen and a pocket protector. At our T Public store, check it out. <laughs> Triviality <laughs> lab coat. No, these big pens are so good, you don't need a pocket protector, right? Because they're not gonna leak on you. <laughs> that's I don't never know leak. That's true, but. <laughs> Leak proof technology <laughs> penned it by Bic. Uh, our... <laughs> no, uh... Sorry, Neil's got the giggles over there. <laughs> Number three uh, Bluetooth and GPS are a, in normal use all over the world. Neither technology would be where they are without the development of frequency hopping signal, first thought of by this famous star of Hollywood's Golden Age. We can lock in. All right. We're going to go with a lucky Lamar. <laughs> a lucky Lamar, yeah. 
Yeah, I believe I already mentioned Hedy Lamar at the top of this round, so um, that's what we're going to go with. And, of course, points for both teams, Hedy Lamar. <laughs> when you mentioned it, it made me laugh very hard. <laughs> uh, okay. oh, I, I didn't give anything away. They they know. <laughs> we know. We've seen Bombshell. Yeah. We love our Hedy dog. Lamar history. Uh, number four. The U.S. Women's National Soccer Team... Has one of the most is one of the most successful sports team in U.S. history. There have been many great players on the team. With 184 goals, who is the all-time leading scorer for the U.S. Women's National Team? Neil, uh, you're pretty confident in something. I'm pretty confident in uh, uh, this answer over here. Okay, we're locked in. All right, um, Jeff. You said you had a few ideas. What were you thinking? You know your typical Brandy Chastain, Mia Hamm types. I think it's a it's um, a a newer player, not from that era. Ah. I think it's I think it's Abby Wambach. Okay, that, it's or Alex Morgan, but I'm I would lean towards Abby. Did you know that Abby Wambach poops cubes? <laughs> <laughs> what a fun fact. Matt was talking about Alex Morgan, uh, which wasn't what they went with, but that was like on the right track. But I, I agree with him. I think it's someone newer, and I believe it is also Abby Wambach. And points for both teams. It is, in fact, Abby Wambach. So going into number five. Isabella Bumfrey was born into slavery in 1797. She spoke Dutch as her first language and continued to have a Dutch accent through the rest of her life. In 1826, she escaped slavery and soon after became a Christian. She went on to become one of the greatest abolitionists in American history. She gave her famous speech, Ain't I a Woman, at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention. But in 1843, Isabella changed her name to this more famous moniker. Well, I know it, Matt. We can lock in. So, Ken. I agree. Uh, Ken, I believe uh, the clue there was the big speech. Um, and I, I'm going to go with Sojourner Truth, if you're okay with that. Yeah, that sounds good. I agree with them, Matt. I think it's Sojourner Truth. Mm -hmm. And points to both teams. It is Sojourner Truth. We've we've recovered from the beginning of that round. Yes, indeed. We have. How much uh, so? Well, after five questions, uh, we, we had a little trouble on the first two, but the last three we both got right uh, equally. So we're picking up 30 points each, bringing our totals to on We Haven 110 and Do Haven 120. Still a very tight game. So moving on to number six. This American engineer, physician, and former astronaut was the first black woman to travel to space. The te television show Star Trek, and in particular African-American actress Nichelle Nichols' portrayal of Lieutenant Uhura, further stoked her interest in space when she was a child. She would later become the first real astronaut to guest star on Star Trek. And in 2017, Lego released a Women of NASA minifigure set, which she was included in. Okay, Ken, I have a hunch. I, I'm not sure if I'm correct. I think I'm close, though, so I, I think, I don't know. Close is better than my Lucky Johnson, so let's go with your close. Okay. Not Glenn Close, right? Uh, no, because that would be fatal. Matt, I uh, I hope you can help me out on this one. It's very frustrating. Oh, and no. I've got space <laughs> and Lego right here in the in the old wheelhouse. And you only I'm... do space and Lego if it's Star Wars. You it's the old erogenous to, don't, don't zones. Don't lie to me. Jeff's erogenous zone, space and Lego. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I was I took 2017 off of buying Lego sets, so that's the one I missed. When Jeff um, steps on a Lego, he goes, "Oh." <laughs> so I I I'm no help here. Um, I don't even I don't have a lucky name to even drop. I got nothing. Put the Legos on the floor. Get barefoot. Step on the Legos. I have no I, idea, I'm Matt. The Home Alone Four. There's a lot of that. Um, <laughs> Matt, I'm I'm yeah. totally lost. I I wish I could pull the name, but I'm getting nowhere. We are tapping out. It seems like. So uh, all that came to me, I, I believe the middle name is May. It's a three named 
person. Um, and I told Ken, you know, we keep saying Johnson. I think it does start with a J. It's like Jameson. Jemis, I think I just put Jameson. 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 Like, I guess the liquor. I don't know. May something Jemison. J- Jameson. And that will be points to on we haven nice, but may is actually her first name and carol is her middle name and it's jameson oh great i got it backwards but it was close enough okay good job neil thank you uh so number seven voice acting is a demanding profession but this woman makes it looks easy look easy with 678 credits to her name dating back to the 90s there's a good chance you've heard her voice She's played many iconic characters, such as Princess Azula in Avatar The Last Airbender, Daphne from Scooby-Doo, and Wonder Woman. She's also an accomplished singer with several albums. Who is this voice actor? Do you have any ideas? I was trying to think of the the famous women that I know who do voiceover work, and I know it's not Nancy Cartwright. I don't think it's um, Yardley Smith. Um <laughs> So the Simpsons character. <laughs> hey, I was getting through some that... of them. I was trying to remember the ones that did Rugrats. Now, okay. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally blank. I mean, you know, acting is not my strong suit. So, so um, I guess I don't want to tap again, but um, we don't have anything. So Rebecca Simpson. Yeah, Yardley Smith. Uh, so this one, uh, I believe, is going to be helping me from TikTok. Um, for some reason, I get a lot of voiceover artists on TikTok. But um, I believe her name is Gray Delisle. And that will be uh, points to on oh, wow. Haven. Her name is Gray Delisle, or she's also been known as Gray Griffin. So uh, number eight, this singer gave many people under the age of 30 something to talk about when she won the 2022 Song of the Year Grammy for her song Just Like That. The song is about a woman who is encounters the recipient of her son's donated heart. Many couldn't understand how she beat Beyonce, Harry Styles, Adele, and Taylor Swift. All right, uh, Ken and I dug deep into our early 90s archive of uh, top 40 VH1 hits, and um, <laughs> we think we have a name, so we're going to lock in. Well, Matt, I don't know how you feel about this, but if Neil's mutterings are correct, um, it is confirming my suspicion that uh, it's the artist of "Let's Give Him Something to Talk About," which was oh, Bonnie Raitt. Bonnie Raitt. Yeah, yeah. I I remember this. Um, I thought the song of the year was actually won by Silk Sonic because I remember that trending, but I think Bonnie Raitt fits all the rest. So maybe. It's 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 confusing when there's song, album, whatever. Record. There's like ten different categories that all mean the same thing. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm real. I'm I'm pretty comfortable locking with Bonnie Raitt. Yeah, uh, we feel the same way. We think it is the artist behind something to talk about. We said Bonnie Raitt. And points to both teams. It was in fact Bonnie Raitt. And if you haven't heard the song, just like that, it is a beautiful song. And um. It's definitely something that I care about because uh, I have a very good friend that works in organ and tissue donation, and I'm an organ donor myself. So it's a gift that I think people can give, and I, I I hope that people continue to be organ donors and more people sign up to be organ donors. Indeed. Well yeah, said. Very important. So moving on to number nine. Marguerite Annie Johnson lived several fascinating lives, a singer, a storyteller, activist, and poet. She won three Grammy Awards and even spent five years of her life being mute after a traumatic event. She was an inspiration to so many people and let the world know you couldn't keep her caged. Um, what name is Marguerite better known as? All right. We are locked in here. Um... The cage bird immediately launches me into thinking it's Maya Angelou. Oh, yeah. That's he said the, the visual uh... of you being launched. <laughs> <laughs> into, into, a cage. into Maya Angelou? Oh. Um, um, author of I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. Um, so, yeah. I, that, I, I mean, that's enough for me. Let's lock it in. Let's not waste these people's time. Yeah, I think that was, that, that was enough for me, too. All you got to do is say caged, and I'm going to be like, <laughs> cage bird? 
My or Nick Angelou. Cage. It's one of the one of the two. Yeah. Maya Angelou. Billy Corgan. Oh. And points for both teams. It is in fact Maya Angelou. And finally, number ten. During World War II, Major Marina Raskova used her connection with Joseph Stalin to form the first female combat unit for Russia during that time. Thus, the 588th Night Bomber Regiment was born. These women would use the tactic of idling their engines to glide into the target with only the sound of the wind is warning Much below. like a Prius. This... <laughs> <laughs> this tactic earned them the nickname from the er, earned them this nickname from the German soldiers. Is that a Prius? That's a Prius going ninety. <laughs> uh, me, me, and Neil had the same idea, so we're locked in. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, and remember, I guess, the German I... soldiers were possibly on meth. <laughs> Oh, that changes everything. <laughs> um, quiet Riot. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a sweet name, though, for it. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm... We don't know. All right. It's, it's killing me. It's the Night Witches. Oh. And that is points to Ennui Haven. It was the Night Witches. The German soldiers often said that it's sounded like a broom going through the air so they thought of them as witches and they attacked at night well the second half of the second round uh, proved to be pretty big for on we haven picking up 50 points a crushing blow a crushing blow uh just like the night witches uh, you didn't see it coming uh we picked up 50 points and we're at 160 uh but do haven still picking up 20 points bringing their total to 140 so it's only a 20 point game so as an avatar the last airbender fan uh I was going to do my categories based off of the nations and then one of the bending techniques. So the final round categories are fire, earth, water, air, and you spirit. You sure you don't want that last one to be heart? heart. <laughs> and make Matt really angry? See, I thought about that. The choice is yours. <laughs> I thought about which one I was a bigger fan of, and I went with Avatar. <laughs> The wagers are now locked in. It looks like we're going to go 30s all the way down, and you're going 30s all the way down except for what? Earth, because Matt said, I hate this planet. Get me off of it. Okay, so you guys are just doing 20 on that one. Before we move on to the questions, just want to thank all of our Patreon supporters out there. It means so much to us and helps us keep on keeping on. Yeah, you can join uh, Stephen and uh, many like him over at patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast where you'll get our main feed episodes ad free and you'll get a bunch of bonus audio content but most of all uh, you'll be joining a great community uh, just like the ones we have over on facebook at the crop or if you're over at discord we're almost at 500 people on discord having fun doing movie night parties uh, play testing and all that good stuff so join steven uh, for some extra perks and some extra bonus audio content and help support the, the show by going to patreon.com slash triviality podcast. The only thing wiser than joining our Patreon is writing with a Bic pen. That's right. No clumps. No clumps. Uh, let's get it's the, not a mascara. Let's get the <laughs> question. Oh, you know, sometimes you're writing with a crappy pen. And it could be. Maybe clump, the losing clumpy, team has to use Bic pens ink. for mascara. Anyways, let's get the questions. All right. Starting with the category of fire. This famous fire is believed to have started at 8.30 p.m. on October 8, 1871. It took 300 lives and destroyed 17,000 structures, leaving more than 100,000 residents homeless. Moving on to Earth. A protest boat voyage against the underground testing of a nuclear weapon on the island of Amichitika, Alaska, in 1971 is credited with the formation of this environmentalism focused independent global campaigning network water the great mississippi river is 2340 miles long and it drains all or part of 31 u.s states and two canadian provinces what lake is the river said to initially rise from air the United States Air Force originally created on the 1st of August 1907 as a part of the Army Signal Corps. 
It became a separate branch of the U.S. Armed Forces on September 18, 1947, with the enactment of the National Security Act of 1947. What president signed that act? Finally, Spirit. The Spirit is a 2008 American neo-noir superhero film with a stacked cast, including Samuel L. Jackson, Ava Mendez, Sarah Paulson, Scarlett Johansson, and Dan Loria. The movie was a commercial and critical failure. What comic book legend wrote the screenplay and directed the film? All right, we have our questions. We'll be right back with our answers. Hello, everyone. It's Takuyi here. And I'm Gabby. And we are the hosts of History of Everything, a podcast which you can probably guess by the name is, well, I mean, it's about everything. Do you want to know why people thought potatoes were evil and would give you syphilis? Are you curious about all the stories of the terrible and stupid ways that people have kicked the bucket over the years? Do you want to hear tales about all of the different badasses of history and the lives that they had brought to life? Well, if so, then look no further. History of Everything is just the right podcast for you. It's available on Spotify, Pandora, and anywhere else that you get your podcast from. Join us for some fun and just see how weird and wacky history can be. If you enjoy bizarre true stories, then the Useless Information Podcast is the podcast for you. For example, did you know that author Robert Louis Stevenson gave his birthday away? Or that there was a football team that played for six years before someone realized that the school never ever existed? Or that a dog in upstate New York was once placed on trial for murder? Well, to hear these and hundreds of additional fascinating true stories from the flip side history, be sure to check out the Useless Information Podcast. That's the Useless Information Podcast podcasting worldwide since 2008 and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. Be sure to check it out. Our answers are now locked in. So let's have the questions one more time, see how we did, and who will be the cream of the crop? Yeah. So the first category of fire. This famous fire is believed to have started at 8.30 p.m. on October 8, 1871. It took 300 lives, destroyed 17,000 structures, leaving more than 100 residents homeless. All right, 30 points. We picked the famous dust fire, the Great Chicago Fire. Mm -hmm. I think it also took one cow, which you didn't mention, but we said Chicago Fire. Uh, when, yeah, that bo points to both teams. When I was researching it, uh, I saw the cow. I was thinking of mentioning it, but then it said that that was a debated fact. Yeah, the Probably cow gets a bad racist rap. The cow is just a racist lie, like most things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on to Earth. A protest bo vo uh, boat voyage against the underground testing of a nuclear weapon on the island of Amichika, Alaska in 1971 is credited with the formation of this environmentalism-focused independent global campaigning network. We were deciding between Greenpeace and the Sierra Club, and we went with Greenpeace. We, for 30, 20 points, sorry, also said Greenpeace. And points to both teams, it is Greenpeace. Despite the fact that Matt hates the Earth. <laughs> That's why I won't join Greenpeace. He said he was going to stuff straws into sea turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Plastic straws, nonetheless. It's always horrible. a plot point in movies Matt when someone's so like, horrible. I'm going to go join Greenpeace and leave. But I've never met someone in real life that has joined Greenpeace. I'm sure they're great people. I've, I've met many people have you? in Greenpeace on the street asking for a moment of my time. I have seen that. <laughs> Please take off I'm your like, headphones, Not now, sir. not now. Yeah. I love I love the earth, but not now. I actually, I actually have met people that were in the Peace Corps, surprisingly. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I'm in Greenpeace right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so moving on to question number three, water. The Great Mississippi River is 2,340 miles long, and it drains all or part of 31 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces. What lake is the river said to initially rise from? Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, I definitely got fooled twice. But Neil, <laughs> but Neil remembered. Yeah, shout out to Hugh Gitlin. Uh, this is Lake Itasca. Oh, does he own Lake Itasca? We we also said Lake Itasca. And points to both team. It is Lake Itasca. He doesn't own it, but he did ask us this question on our three hundredth episode. <laughs> um. 
In the category of air, the United States Air Force was originally created on the 1st of August 1907 as a part of the Army Signal Corps. It became a second branch of the, of the U.S. Armed Forces on September 18, 1947, with the enactment of the National Security Act of 1947. What president signed that act? Well, uh, we went with Truman. Uh, we were kind of thinking about Eisenhower. He led the uh, the forces in World War II, and we were thinking maybe he would have been like, hey, this is bogus the way this is all set up. But we stuck with Truman. Felt like the year was just too close to the end of the war. Yeah. Um, being president from 1945 to 1952, um, we guessed that it was Harry. The S stands for S. Truman. And points to both teams, it is Harry S. Truman. I wanted to do an Air Force question, but uh, I didn't want to ask you when it was created because I don't think anyone outside of the Air Force really remembers that it was created in 1947. So I went with the president. Good choice. Um, spirit. <laughs> the Spirit is a 2008 American neo-noir superhero film with a stacked cast, including Samuel L. Jackson, Ava Mendez, Sarah Paulson, Scarlett Johansson, and Dan Loria. The movie was a commercial and critical failure. What comic book legend wrote the screenplay and directed the film? Yes, after his experiences uh, on the set of Sin City with Robert Rodriguez, he struck out on his own and uh, Frank Miller made a movie. We agree that Frank Miller made a movie. We said Frank Miller. And points to both teams. Well, the scores are in, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it looks like Dewhaven is going to double their score, bringing their total to 280 points, but picking up 150 points, getting all five questions right, is Anwi Haven, bringing their total to 310, making them today's cream of the crop. But the cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Well done, boys. Great score. Hard-fought yeah. battle. Yeah, great scores, though. 310 to 280. That's a high-scoring game. Uh, very well-written game as well, Stephen. Indeed. Well, speaking of the spirit, um, this game had a lot of spirit to it, and it's thanks to you. Uh, any uh, parting words, anyone you'd like to give a shout-out to? We appreciate your time and, and your support. Uh, I'd like to give a shout-out to my family and uh, friends that I played trivia with and my trivia co-hosts back overseas. Um, and my brother, my brother is, uh, basically a living encyclopedia and is a much better player than I am. I think I'm a pretty decent host. He's actually also a really good trivia, uh, host as well. He's, I've learned a lot from him. We actually did a, uh, uh, a music bingo where if you could complete the lyrics of a sound or of the song, you got to click your little bingo card. Nice. That sounds like a lot of um, fun. And then I'd also like to, uh, like I said before about uh, the Bonnie Raitt song and organ donation, I think it's an important thing. And I think if you can become an organ donor, you should. You're giving the gift of so many different things. I mean, most people don't know that. When you become an organ donor, you're giving away not only your organs, but there's a lot of tissues that you can give away too. Um, like you can donate your nerves and you can donate uh, bone marrow and all these different things. Um, and I think it's a, it's very important to me to get that out there. I, I Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for saying that. I mean, that is a very... Um you know, noble cause and noble message to to give out. Uh, I'm an organ donor as well. I think it's very important. Same, yeah. Um, and uh, also, thank you for your service uh, uh, that we didn't uh, get a chance to mention at the top. We appreciate that. And uh, anyone who's listening who is a cropper or um, in the San Antonio area, uh, Stephen's looking for some uh, trivia teammates or, or possibly even a venue to host some trivia. And if you liked today's game, then you should reach out to him for that. But uh, speaking of today's game, um, we're just one of many shows on a large network, uh, and that network is Airwave. You can find a lot of really cool podcasts over at airwavemedia.com. One of those shows is History Tea Time. Uh, you can also check out uh, a show called Monster Talk, and then uh, The Secret History of Hollywood. Those are all at airwavemedia.com. Yeah, speaking of Airwave, please also take our listener questionnaire at surveymonkey.com slash r slash airwave. All right. Well, thank you so much to Stephen once again. Join him over at patreon.com slash triviality podcast for Matt, Stephen, Jeff, and Ken. My name is Neil Bick. 
Fisher, and that was Triviality. <laughs> <laughs>